Hey, thanks for being here for another video. Uh, I'm doing forensics once again because it seems to be a topic that people really, really enjoy. So, since I'm going to be building uh, a new forensic machine that I need something portable, uh, and I don't really, I don't like to rely on pre-built forensic uh, dist Linux distributions, I figured why not film it and show you how I build my own Linux distribution. Well, I don't build my own Linux distribution, I'm not that crazy. But I'm going to build this portable system, which is a laptop. Uh, I'm going to install Debian and I'm going to install all my forensic tools that I use. This way, keep it lean. Don't have too many tools on there. I just have on there what I really need. I don't need to have all these other tools, which I'm not going to be using anyways. We're going to have to start from the beginning. So I'm choosing Debian because I, I like Debian. You can choose Mint. You can choose Ubuntu. It's it's really up to you. You can you can do other other ones, uh, but it's up to you. But before I start, don't forget to like it, share and subscribe this video. You're really helping me out. Otherwise, YouTube is not recommending these this videos to anybody. But if you hit like, you share it and you subscribe to my channel, then it really helps me out. So let's start. So so like I said at the beginning, I'm going with Debian because that's why I prefer. If you go with Ubuntu or Mint, it's still built on Debian. Um, the installation is a little bit easier with Mint or Ubuntu, but uh, I'm going to go with Debian. I'm, I'm a long-time Linux user. I've been using Linux since mid-90s. My first Linux installation was Slackware, which was, wasn't easy to install. I mean, it's not uh, Linux from scratch type of idea. It's not uh, Gentoo, but I mean, it's, it takes a lot of work, but it's not as crazy as the other ones. Over time, I switched over to Debian. Now I'm running Mint. Ubuntu and Debian on depending on what I'm doing. So how do we get started? So first you need a computer. It can be a desktop. It can be a laptop. It's whatever you need to use. Uh, if you if it's going to be a laptop, make sure you have eSATA ports. Make sure you have USB 3. You have Lightning. Make sure you have all the necessary ports on your laptop. I mean, you can go with something lightweight if you're doing some lightweight work, but preferably you need something powerful. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, a gaming laptop for this task. Let's go with my desktop. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Etcher. The software you need to write the image of uh, the Linux installation image onto a USB drive. So just install this. So download this, install it, and then uh, have it at the, at, at the ready. So after you've installed it, you're going to go into Debian.org. And once you are Debian, and also get yourself a USB drive, four gigs or more, preferably eight gigs. All you got to do is hit download and save it and download it. I've already done that. I'm not going to be downloading it again. Take your USB drive plug it in now pay attention what you're doing here because you can erase your hard drive if you don't do this right here's Belena etcher opened up flash from file are we gonna choose Debian the one you downloaded so we downloaded the net installation which is only 345 megabytes uh, you can get the f two ISOs there's actually two ISOs uh, DVD 1 DVD 2 you can download it like 8 gigs total if you want to get all that you can but you know for what we do we just need net installation so all the packages needed for your a particular build will be all will be downloaded as you need them we do want to keep it as lightly as possible right i mean i do i mean when i build my linux machines i want to keep them as lightly as possible i don't care for all the extra stuff been here now this is where you have to pay attention what you're doing i'm not gonna be responsible for anything that happens here you folks have been warned you don't have to use bill and etcher you can use other software you can use on linux you can use dd whatever works for you there's multiple ways to skin a cat uh this is just the method i'm using so we're going to choose our SanDisk Ultra Track. There it is. Uh, just don't choose any of your hard drives because you'll wipe them and there'll be no recovery there. So we choose SanDisk Ultra, go next, and just hit flash. And this takes a few minutes. If that pop-up comes up, just hit yes. In the background there, you can see my other machine, um, Linux. This, this one there is running Mint. I use it for, for many different things. I have my file server, some other few things, some forensic work, some imaging. Some imaging. There's a SAS controller on there. There's actually two of them. Linux I use quite often in here. I mean, if most of these forensic other tools and, and data recovery tools would, would run on Linux, I'll be definitely using it. Okay, so we're done. Uh, imaging is finished. So let's go over to the laptop now and install Debian. Okay, so now that we have the USB made, and we have a computer here, and like I said, I'm using a gaming laptop, but you can use whatever works for you. Uh, we're gonna plug the USB into the drive, uh, to the computer, and we're gonna boot from it. I can't record the screen yet because uh, this laptop, even though it has HDMI, it can't output to OBS. It just, HDMI doesn't get activated until Windows or Linux is booted up. So uh, for now, we, I'm gonna use a camera that's right there, right here. This camera is gonna record the screen until I get uh, Linux installed, and then we're gonna uh, record the screen. I'm gonna switch over to OBS that can uh, capture through HDMI. So uh, let's get booted up. So in this particular laptop, 
uh, to boot from USB is F12. There we go. So now it's booting. So we can go with graphical install. We don't have to. Um, we can do text. Doesn't matter. Let me just fix my mic. I don't want it to be rubbing against my shirt. So choose your language. So obviously I speak English, so I'll choose English. I also speak Polish. Uh, but uh, we're not gonna choose Polish because I uh, my Polish is not very good when it comes to IT stuff. Keyboard configuration doesn't matter. So now it's gonna load some drivers. Um, now this particular laptop, the Wi-Fi will not work until I load drivers. I don't care, I'm hooked up to uh, uh, Ethernet anyways. So there's the screen that uh, complains about uh, Wi-Fi. I could just find the, the drivers, but I don't really care for Wi-Fi, I can fix it later. Now it's gonna detect the network interface. Now, uh, a little bit of warning. If you have uh, already an OS installed on this machine, uh, be careful because you might wipe the, OS, the previous OS. So the drive that's in this computer, I'm gonna wipe entirely anyway, so I don't really care what's on it. Uh, but um, should you have Windows or, or on your test test computer, uh, there's an option uh, that's gonna come up soon that you can choose to install Linux side by side with Windows. Um, you can do that if you like. I am not gonna cover that. That's just something you have to uh, figure out on your own. Okay, host name. That's fine. Debian's fine. I don't care. Uh, domain, we're not part of the domain, so we're gonna skip the domain. Password. I'm gonna choose a simple password. I'm gonna change the password later. This is just for the sake of uh, being quick. I'm gonna use the simple password. Okay, we Easter time zone. Now, because we downloaded the net install of uh, Debian, it's gonna download a lot of packages. So I'm gonna pause at the point where it gets to that. And uh, we're gonna re resume once we get past that. But let's at least get to that point so you know what to do. And like I said, you can you can choose Mint, Ubuntu. I prefer Debian, that's what I like to use. I would install Slackware, but uh, that might be a bit more complicated for, for, for some of you. So we're gonna go with um, Debian. So this is where a lot of you will have to pay attention because like I said, if you have a, another operating system on this machine, uh, you gotta be careful because you're gonna wipe your disks. I'm not gonna be responsible if anything happens. You know, I'm putting a text right here. Not responsible. Um, just, just read everything you see on the screen. If you have Windows, in install side by side. Make a backup before you do anything. Don't be crazy. Um, you're gonna lose some of your, <laughs> you're gonna lose your data, and I, I can't help you. I'm sorry. So we're gonna use the entire disk. You can use set, set up LVM. You can set up encrypted LVM. Um, you know what, maybe I'll choose encrypted LVM since I am going to use this um, as my forensic station anyway. Um, so here's the uh, NVMe drive. You can choose here between um, entire everything on single partition or you can separate home and then var or temp partition. You can separate if you like. I don't like doing that. I, you know, if I had a huge disk, I would probably separate them. Uh, but for, for what I use, I'm going to choose everything on single partition. Yeah, we're gonna write to disk. He's gonna erase it here. Okay, wiping is done. Now I need to enter our encryption passphrase. So now I'm gonna partition the disks. Now I'm gonna format the partition and we're using LVM encryption. It's not necessary, but I mean, it's, it's always good to encrypt your data. Just, you know, keep a backup because if you don't, then you're gonna have some problems later. You don't wanna be doing that. The amount of phone calls I'm getting of people having issues, you know, they, they encrypt their computer or, you know, they have a MacBook that's already pre-encrypted running um, File Vault or they have a Surface Pro. And um, even the Lenovo I bought when it came with Windows, it was already pre-set up with uh, BitLocker. So, you know, it's good to have encryption. It's really good, but it's, it's even better to also have backups because if you don't have backups, then you might be SOL on this, right? So now the base system is installing. Um, this will take some time, so I'm probably gonna pause the video here. Well, I was actually base installation. I should have read the screen, but anyways, uh, now we're gonna choose our package manager. We're gonna continue here. Um, you gotta choose the local one to you. So if you chose your country at the beginning of installation, you have to choose the closest server to you. I mean, just guess. Look what's look. Uh, look at the list and choose the one that's uh, you would think will be closer to you. Uh, we don't need HTTP proxy. Uh, the APT is gonna uh, scan the mirror and it's gonna find the latest packages. 
Okay, you can submit uh, if you want. I don't want to submit. Here's it's up to you. What do you want to choose? Um, if you're comfortable with GNOME as your desktop, then choose GNOME. If you're comfortable with XFC, then choose that. If you want KDE, you know, choose KDE. I'm more of a um, cinnamon kind of guy, and um, I also want SSH and I want standard system utilities. Cinnamon, and you know, I'm going to put GNOME in case I want to use GNOME and Mate. So I like to use these three. Cinnamon is my favorite, but. Um, if you like GNOME, choose GNOME. Whatever works for you, you choose the uh, the, uh, the desktop environment that uh, suits you. If you want something super lightweight, XFCE, LXDE, or LXQT, it's you know it's fine. It's really preference. This is why Linux is so great. You can really dial it down to exactly how you like it. You don't have to uh, uh, be stuck with one single user interface. Um, that's the beauty of Linux. Uh, like I said, I've been using Linux since um, uh, mid '90s, so. Uh, it's been a while. Okay, so now this portion will take a while. So there's, you know, 1800 packages to, to download and then to install. So here's where we're going to pause the video. Uh, I'm going to pause it right now. Uh, and then we're going to come back once we have passed that point. One eternity later. So we're in a home stretch now. We just finished uh, the installation procedure. So now here you can choose between the login manager you like. You know, GDM3 is fine. I mean, you can try LightDM. It's up to you. It's really the both almost identical. I uh, GDM3 is nice. Uh, LightDM is also nice. But we'll continue here. This is all about personal preference. It's really up to you what you want to um, what you want to choose. So now it's installing uh, the software. So this is like the home stretch now. It's we're almost done here. And I'm thinking uh, this video is getting quite long, so we're probably gonna have to end up splitting it into two. two Two parts. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't want the video to be 30 minutes. It's, it's, who's gonna watch it 30 minutes? Unless you like watching me, that's that's great. You know, I can make them an hour if you like. Uh, but let's just keep them under 20 minutes if it, if, if possible. I ideally 50 minutes would be great. And well, while we wait for this, you know, have you remember to subscribe to my channel and then hit like and all that stuff. It really, really, really helps this channel. Um, I've gotten some a lot of good feedback on my videos lately. Um, a lot of people messaged me and said they'd like the new videos, so we'll just stick to that. I know Flash and uh, things like this can get boring quickly because it's pretty repetitive and it's pretty complicated. A lot of people don't understand it, so uh, I'm not going to bore a lot of people with Flash. Uh, but I, I'm, I have some coming up soon. I did film uh, one I did recently, so hopefully that will be out soon too. But uh, let's stick to forensics. And on, 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 on Also, on, on related notes, not unrelated but kind of related um i've been sticking to my uh one video a week schedule um since january so i, I made i set up a goal for myself make a video every single week uh and you know we're almost halfway through the year i'm we halfway through, yeah we're pretty much halfway through the year now and um i am pretty much had a video out every monday plus lately i've been posting my tiktok videos on this channel um so sometimes once a day I'll post a video from TikTok on the channel, but um, I'm trying to set up the YouTube shorts, but it's not really working. It's, I, I don't know, I, it doesn't let me, let me try another phone here. Yeah, see the problem is on YouTube, I don't get an option to uh, post a short. So if I post a short, uh, it just gets uploaded as a normal video. I don't know, I wonder why. Um, it doesn't let me strange. Oh, well, well, I'll post them anyways. So while that's going, uh, this is going to probably take another 10 minutes. I'm going to pause here and then we're going to come back. <clears throat> okay, so installation is completed. Linux is installed. Now we're going to see if it boots. If it doesn't boot, then <laughs> I'm going to have to redo this. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got to remove the installation media. But don't forget to remove the installation media. If your system is uh, set to boot from USB all the time, you actually remove it. And uh, let's see if it boots up. So that's a good sign. We're gonna hit enter here. If you had Windows and you set up alongside of uh, Linux, then you will have um, then you will have a um, uh, option to choose Windows Boot Manager. Anyways, um, so now we have to uh, uh, enter a password to decrypt the, the drive. I think that was the password I used. Yeah, that was it. So. Anytime you boot the computer from this point on, if you enabled LVM, is you're gonna have to enter your password at the very, very beginning. The computer will not boot without it. All right, so we're booted up. Um, here we go. I 
Okay, this play manager is still not gonna not gonna push out to the HDMI, unfortunately. So here we are on our login screen. Um, so to choose between different uh, display um, window manage management, you can choose uh, right here. So before you put in your password, click the little gear icon. I did that uh, granted you installed this uh, login manager. Uh, so let's just go with cinnamon, put in our password, and here we are. So we are installed, we're running. Um, so because this is a, uh, you know, uh, Debian is a little bit different, even though uh, Ubuntu and Mint is based on Debian, um, it's a little bit more bare bones, there's a lot of things missing, and and there's a lot of things you have to install, unfortunately, you, you, nothing's gonna work out of the box, uh, but that's okay, I mean, once you start installing packages, it's gonna install dependencies and all that other thing, so uh, you'll get all that installed if you need. So uh, the first thing you'll notice is sudo will not work. So if you type in sudo, it was gonna say you're not part of the um, uh, you're not part of the the sudo group, and this thing will be reported. Uh, I'll show you in a second. So if you open terminal here, and just change colors. I hate uh, white terminal windows. So I don't know how sharp that is. So now, if you were to type uh, sudo sudo snap snap dick, as you see here. First guy is not not in the sudo which file of the incident will be reported. So to fix this, yeah, you're gonna do su uh, space dash. You're gonna put in your password. Okay, we're in. So now um, to fix that sudo su option uh, issue, it's a user mod dash a capital G sudo, and you're gonna type in uh, forensic guy. So, on your system, depending on what user you put in and your system as your um, um, login, you're gonna put in, put that in. Okay, now it's fixed. Now it's not gonna work right out of the box. If you tr still try doing sudo, it's not gonna work. Uh, you're gonna have to reboot or close. I think uh, sometimes just closing the terminal might be enough, but uh, I don't think so. Sudo synaptic. No, still doesn't work. So we're gonna have to reboot. Uh, also, there's one more thing I have to do. Um, we're gonna move the panel. I like it on top. So that's where I like my panel. Uh, also, uh, I'm gonna do some cosmetic changes here. I'm gonna make my windows dark, and I like dark themes. I like different wallpapers. So I'll change all that before part two is started. So I mean, this is all personal preference you can decide what you want to do you can do all these changes yourself uh it's you know i'm just gonna do what i like uh but it's totally up to you uh we're gonna restart so cinnamon will be our default now so whatever you choose as a uh, as your last uh window manager that's gonna be the, the that's gonna be basically uh next time you log in it's gonna remember so that's it. If you followed along and if you installed your Linux, Linux then you're pretty much finished at this point. Uh, thanks for being back in my channel. Uh, this is part two of the Linux video that I started last week. I'm finally getting around to finishing this video. So I hope you follow part one when we went from uh, installing uh, Debian Linux onto your machine. Um, obviously, this is not going to be a virtual machine thing. This is mostly for uh, native installation, like I mentioned in the first video. So if you get this far and you've installed uh, Debian, then congratulations. Now you have it ready. Uh, so what do you do from this point? Well, first of all, I want to set up my distribution how I like it. So move everything around and before I start don't forget to share and like this video you know drop me a comment below hit like subscribe if you haven't already uh, it really helps my channel uh, I'm just over 5,000 subscri subscribers so it really helps when you comment it helps the algorithm it does takes you two seconds and it really helps the channel so uh, since we left off in the last video I had to reinstall Linux again I ran into an issue where because of it I enabled uh, encryption on this on this drive uh, and then I tried to install Nvidia drivers it broke the entire system obviously this is an issue related to this particular system it won't affect you in any way unless you have an Nvidia card and you install Debian you have to uh, jump through some hoops uh, for native. There's, there is no really native support for. I mean, there is there is native support for Nvidia, but in, there isn't really. I mean, Nvidia did release drivers, but it's just if you have ena encryption enabled, then it causes an issue with the uh, with the boot manager. So just leave it out. 
uh, uh, hopefully if you have Nvidia, maybe try installing uh, Mint. Mint, uh, Linux Mint has a native support for Nvidia. It's just a simple one-click install and it will work, no problem. But I prefer Debian, so I will run Debian on my machine. But uh, you know, you could have chosen whatever distribution works for you. So let's jump in right into it. So uh, I'm gonna speed through this quickly. I'm just gonna do a, a time lapse of me setting it up just the way I like it. So. I have screen recording going, uh, I'm using OBS, uh, so let's just go through this very fast and we'll come back to the screen once I'm done setting it up the way I like it. So I'm done setting up my Linux machine. As you can see, I've installed just a few minimal things, a dark theme and uh, some applets here on top. You can see here on the top, I want to see my temperature of my, uh, my system and and uh, CPU usage and all these things, but uh, pretty much this is I'm done. Uh, also on the bottom here, I have the log. So the system log, I like to view what's happening with the computer. So uh, most most of the machines, my Linux machines have this on the bottom. Now that we're done, let's get a few things out of the way. For installation of my packages, I'm gonna be using Synaptics. Now Synaptics will not work in GNOME. I'm sure there's a workaround, but uh, I can't be bothered because I use Cinnamon as my desktop environment, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. If you were to run Synaptics in GNOME, it's not gonna launch. It's just gonna say you can only run it without no, uh, without uh, root privileges. I haven't tried running it through Terminal on there. If you go to Terminal and GNOME and then run it with, uh, with uh, root privileges, I, I'm sure it might work, but since I don't use GNOME, I'm not a big fan of GNOME. I used to be, I'm not anymore. I prefer uh, Cinnamon. Then we're gonna stick with that. To launch Synaptic, just to go go to the menu, type in Syn, and then you'll see it here. You gotta put in your um, root password. Um, so once you have it running, uh, it's gonna update the packages. Now there's a few things you have to do inside of Synaptics uh, to get access to everything. So you go into repositories and make sure uh, to enable D DFSG compatible software and then non DFSG compatible software. These two will not be enabled, so you should enable these. Um, other than that, you can, if you need to add any other uh, repositories, you can add here. Uh, make sure this is enabled. Uh, everything else is good. You can reload the packages quickly here. Even though I didn't make any changes, but if you make the changes, you're gonna have to reload your packages here. Uh, the next thing is under preferences. This will be disabled. Make sure you enable consider uh, recommended packages as dependencies and clicking on the status icon uh, uh, marks the most uh, likely action. If you don't do this, if you don't check mark this, what's gonna happen is when you select packages here on the on the left, it's gonna ask you to confirm every single time. It's annoying. So just make sure you do that. And from this point, uh, apply this. From this point, uh, we can start installing our packages. So like I said, I haven't installed anything that I don't, that, that uh, that's forensic, uh, specific for forensics yet. Uh, I just installed my modifications for the look and feel of the of the distribution. So uh, as of right now, this distribution is very light because if you, I've only installed what I need. Um, this is why I choose um, Debian over over um, Ubuntu or or Mint or whatever distribution you like because it's so it's so lightweight. So you can only install the specific things you need now. That also means that if you're installing uh, from source or if you if you're compiling your your own packages. It will complain about missing libraries and dependencies. You will have to install them one by one. Unlike with uh, Mint or Ubuntu, you're gonna have everything already pre-installed, well, almost everything. Can't have everything, I'll be crazy, but uh, you're gonna have most of the things pre-installed, which is nice. Um, so if, if, you, if you prefer Mint, Ubuntu, just go that route, that's fine. It's, 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 it's your system, you, you can do whatever you like. Um, so. Let's start with a few simple things. So definitely I want um, DCFLDD. So here we go. We're going to check mark DCFLDD. We'll get to the forensic extras after. Uh, what else do we need? Actually, let me, um, let me uh, start a document here so I'm gonna link uh, in the description of this video I'm gonna link all the packages that I have installed uh, obviously you feel more than welcome to explore uh, synaptics and see what else is out there there's tons and tons of packages so we installed DCFLDD so DCFLDD is a uh, it's a version of DD which is a disk imager on, on Linux that has capabilities of hashing the uh, whatever you imaging I'm sure you've seen me use it on this channel and in other videos. Okay. Another one that we need is DC3DD. 
it's just another version of DCF LED. So there, there, there it is. Um, you can see that Forensic All is also listed here. Now, if I was to choose Forensic All, it would install all these tools for me. Uh, so if you if you don't really want to waste time with uh, installing individual packages, um, then you can definitely install Forensic All. But we'll, we'll get to it after. Let's just go one by one. Uh, next one that we need is some sort of hex editor. So definitely uh, one of the, the hex editors to use is G hex. There's just so many that you can install. So here's G hex. And now you see a window popped up. So it's asking you, do you want to, do you want to make additional changes? So this specific uh, program will require uh, this library, which is uh, libgtk hex. Uh, we're going to apply. Yes. Yeah. So now you see it's marked at, uh, another dependency. And uh, let's also install a command line. XSD, oh, it's already selected for us. I guess it's part of, um, let's see if it's installed. XXD. Yeah, so we have XXD installed. Yeah, so with XXD, you can view hex in here, so. Uh, you have this already in terminal if you need to use it. Also, I just noticed something. The time on the system is not right. Uh, let's just quickly fix this. Uh, we are apparently in Asia. Another great tool to have is EXIF2. EXIF2 is a program that lets uh, view metadata from uh, specific files. So I just quickly hit apply here. So I'm going to install the few packages that we, that we selected. So we can see here now uh, in, in the terminal window, you can see how the we're installing a few of the application we have now. We don't want to leave, leave synaptics yet. So now we see exif tools installed. So if you want to view metadata of a specific file, you type an exif tool. And uh, let's see if we can view a file here. So here we're viewing uh, exif data on this uh, video capture file that we did. So we can see everything. Now, if you had images, you, you could see a lot, a lot more information. Uh, GPS coordinates and uh, camera type and all these information. So exif tool, super, super important. So these are just a few that you need. So the next one, um, let's just now install like a bunch of different tools. So um, if you're searching for forensic in uh, um, Synaptics, you will find there's quite a bit of different, different uh, tools to install. So let's just go one by one here. Autopsy, definitely a tool that you need. Uh, it's part of the sleuth kit, and um, this is a free forensic tool that lets you uh, examine disks, images, you name it. Great tool, free tool. Um, if you want to try brute forcing encrypted volumes, you can install that. I don't need this on this machine. Definitely need uh, cool. It's to um, generate word lists. Very useful. Let's keep coming down here on the list. I should probably be writing this down. Uh, disk type, definitely important. I won't be able to go over all these tools that I'm installing because this video will be way too long. Definitely disk locker uh, to let you read and write uh, bit locker volumes. And you can you can dial it down to exactly what you need. You don't have to install everything I'm installing. You can just install what you need and then as, as the time goes, you can install more. It's, it's really it's really just the beauty of, of Linux uh, building for forensic work. Uh, this is always good to have. This is just for me. You don't have to install that. Um, Exif probe, another Exif viewer. Uh, ext4 magic i haven't used that but uh, definitely worth having in your machine this is for recovered deleted met uh, files from ext ext3 ext4 partitions keep in mind that's almost impossible a lot of times because just the way uh, ext4 or linux file system is structured fc crack zip uh password record for zip archives always good to have foremost so foremost so foremost is also also a great uh Data recovery tool plus is also a great uh, forensic tool. Definitely install it. It's good to have forensic artifacts. You know, let's put that in. So now, here you see forensics dash all. If you were to select this, this will install a lot of packages that I'm already selecting. I am one selected because I want to go per specific uh, program and show you one by one. Uh, but when I'm done, I'm going to go back here and select all. So we're going to skip these for now. 
you have uh, Galera, Internet Explorer, Cookie Forensic, and, and an Analyst Tour. Never used it because uh, I use Axiom, but you know what? Uh, people still use IE. Why not add it? Scenography program for GIF images. GPART, Guess PC Disk Partition Table, Find Those Partitions. Uh, GRR, Rapid Response of Instant Response Framework. I don't think I've used this, uh, but you know what? Why not have this as well? Guy Major Forensic Imaging Tool based on QT. I've talked about the Guy Major in my other video and the free forensic tools. If you haven't seen that, those videos, you should definitely watch it. I'm gonna link the whole playlist uh, just above here so you can, so you can see it. Definitely worth watching. It's gonna take you some time to go through it all. See, uh, so by setting Guy Major, you can see a lot of libraries and uh, dependencies that uh, need to be installed, including smart monitor tools. These, this one right here, uh, is to view smart data on hard drives. Uh, let's keep going down the list here. Hash deep, recursively compute hash some of. You know, I'm gonna select. Uh, I'm gonna take screenshots later and um, and add it to this list here because uh, otherwise this game is gonna be too long. So hex compare, you to compare identify binary files. Definitely, definitely useful. Uh, I'm sure you can find uh, where you can apply this specific tool. Hex edit, another text viewer, a text ed a hex editor, definitely worth having. Uh, definitely want AFF4 support because uh, I'm I'm using AFF4 more and more often nowadays. Safe copy, another program that helps you copy files that are damaged disks. Scalpel, very 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 powerful tool. You can uh, build your own uh, headers and then you can recover files from uh, Slack space. I've used it many many times. Uh, Scrounge NTFS for NTFS file system definitely worth getting. Simple hex editor with Picasso style interface, yeah, with Pico style. So if you use Pico or Nano in, in, uh, in, uh, on the Mac or, or Linux, uh, you might be used, uh, familiar with this interface. Definitely what worth getting. What else we got here? Test disk, definitely, definitely get test disk. This is another data recovery tool. This is more for cyber stuff or net, net forensics and things of that nature. You can grab that anyway. Veneto forensic tool for examine thumbs.db. You know what? Always useful. Always useful. And also, don't forget volatility. I talked about it in my other video. Uh, this is for, for grabbing uh, uh, memory dumps. Uh, and then win reg fs for fuse file system. Also, a wipe. Very useful tool if you want to wipe a hard drive. I the way I wipe drive, I usually use DD or DD Rescue. I will take slash dev zero and point it into a hard drive or, or a USB drive, or I'll take dev slash random and point it into uh, into my my target drive, and that will um, either write zeros or random characters into the uh, the block device. And last one, X mount. So now let's go back to uh, front here. So we had forensic oh. Uh, let's see what it will add if we select it. So here's a few more things that Forensic All will add. Definitely, uh, we're gonna say yes to this. Forensic Extras. And you know, you can read everything that's being installed. You can see all the dependencies, all the uh, tools. And then if you just want everything, just select Forensic All and then you'll get everything. Let's apply here to be installed. Uh, let's see if I can make this list bigger. So 650 packages, look at all these lists. So let's go and apply this. Uh, let me let let this run and install itself. And then uh, before I end this video, we're gonna we're gonna do one more modification to the system uh, where we're gonna have to disable auto mount. So as you see here in the screen, um, Wireshark is one of the tools that has to be installed. Uh, do you want no super users to be able to capture packets? I mean, it's up to you. You can configure this here the way you want it. Uh, there's gonna be a few more tools that are gonna pop up with some information that you have to configure. Uh, just follow the instructions there and then uh, you're gonna be able to um, finish the installation. And then we're gonna get into setting up the um, the last thing, which is stop auto month. So all the tools have installed. Um, keep in mind, not everything's gonna be in the menu here because a lot of them are command line. Uh, you run from the terminal. Uh, so, you know, a few things might show up here like uh, G-Hex and some other ones, but most of the things are not installed. So, um, uh, another tool that I installed that I didn't mention, that I didn't mention was uh, uh, DD Rescue. I, I use it a lot, so this is also good to have in your system and probably VirtualBox if you do want some testing or, or um, uh, run other OS's or especially, especially if you want to run Windows inside your Linux, uh, definitely worth installing. Um, Windows, if you're working on questionable material or, or explicit material, uh, it's good to have virtual machines so then you can destroy it when you're done. I talked about this in my other video, so 
I will uh, end it uh, on that note when it comes to the uh, virtual machine. So the last thing we have to install is Deconf Editor. So Deconf Editor is going to allow us to make changes in the OS itself. Because uh, you can see now I have a... I have a I have a drive plugged in and it mounted right away. We don't we don't want that happening because if we have a drive that came in, um, you don't want the drive to mount because you want to be able to image it uh, uh, with hashes and then you know uh, and forensic methodology you want to be plugging in the evidence so it mounts. Uh, so then you you are corrupting the evidence um, and its virgin state. So definitely you want to disable auto mount. I mean, if you can use a write blocker, please use a write blocker. This is not a write blocker solution. This is just like a, like a temporary solution if you don't have one. Uh, I've used it on cases and I did document it and I did document it in, uh, in uh, my reports that I've used the, uh, this method of stopping uh, writing because I had some I had some drives that I couldn't plug into anything else. It didn't work through any white write blocker, so I had to use this method. So if you if you document what you're doing and you explain your reasonings, uh, there should be no issues in court uh, at a later date. So let's unmount this USB. Gconfig is installed. We have to make changes in the system so the next time you plug in a drive, it doesn't mount it. So to get to it, uh, you need to go to the menu, type in Dconf editor, and there it is. And you got a warning because you can really screw up your system if you make changes that, uh, that are uh, important for the for the way the system works. So I don't don't make any crazy changes. Just do this one thing. And if you want to learn more about the converter, you can uh, go on Google and uh, read up on it. So you're gonna go to org, cinnamon, desktop, and then media handling. So here's where you want to disable auto mount, auto mount open. And I think that, that'll be it. That. <clears throat> This change enough will be enough for when you plug in the drive, it's not going to mount it. Let's close this. Let's see. I think you would need to reboot for, for this to work, but uh, let me plug in a drive anyway and see what happens. Yeah, as you can see, it tells you that the drive is here. So if you open disks, um, you can definitely see the drive here. It showed up, but it didn't, it didn't mount. It didn't prompt me to mount it. These are the changes that are needed. So anyway. That's it for this video. Uh, hopefully uh, you can install your own distribution this way. Like I said, you can choose whichever one you like. Um, this is only scratching the surface. I've only went back, went through some of the tools that I use. There's, uh, there's plenty more I can install that I haven't mentioned. Hey, welcome back to the channel. So uh, this is going to be part three of our Linux uh, Debian installation video. We're done the installation in part one. We'll Part two, we've installed all our applications, all, all everything that we need. So I, I figured maybe I'll make a part three where I'll, dis, uh, I'll show you how to use your new system to create an image of a hard drive uh, with hash values, verify that image, and then you can start your investigation from that point. So before I go any further, make sure you like and share this video. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel because it really helps the channel a lot. Uh, and, you see, and your support is uh, greatly appreciated. Here we are, the system's installed, system's up and running. So we're gonna take a uh, test hard drive. I have an 80 gig drive, which I'm gonna plug into the system. I'm also gonna take a one terabyte SSD, which I'm gonna use it as a target drive, and we're gonna make an image with hash values, and then we're gonna uh, verify it. So I'm already imaging the drive, but I'll show you the command that I use uh, to image it uh, once I switch over to my screen here. So the first things first, we got to plug in our uh, target drive and our source drive. Now, if you remembered, we set up on the in the second video, we turned off auto mount. So now you see the drives are plugged in. You can see uh, on the screen here, test and NV. Uh, these both of these drives are plugged in, but they're not. Um, they didn't mount. So if I were to click on it, it would mount mount it for me. But we don't want to mount it. So uh, we're gonna run disks. So if you go start menu, type in disk. And you see disks here, so you just launch it, and there it is. So we have uh, one terabyte uh, SanDisk Extreme. This is our, our, our um, target drive, and we have our source drive, which is the evidence, 80 gig, uh, just a standard hard drive. Uh, this, this is just some that drive I had around, laying around here. So first things first, we have to install Gparted, or you can do this from command line. Uh, uh, for the sake of um, being this being easy, we're gonna do it from command line, uh, from uh, from the GUI. So let's run Synaptic again, and we have to install a few packages. Well, one for now, we're gonna install more later. 
Actually, let's, let's install everything now in one shot. So, first thing you need is gparted. And obviously, you can do this through, um, you can do this from command line if you like, uh, adb, so, uh, sorry, apt-get install, and you can install it. So, gparted. Another one we're going to need is sysstat. Sysstat is not necessary, but if you want to uh, monitor the, the drive speed and all that, so uh, it's good to have sysstat. It's, it, what, what sysstat installs is iostat, and you can monitor the drive. So we're going to apply. And what gpart is going to help you do, gpart is going to let you format your hard drive um, the easy way without having to um, resort into command line. I mean, if you want to use command line, you know, it's, uh, you, you're more than welcome to use command line. It's, uh, it's quicker and it's more precise. But uh, if you're new to Linux, if you're just starting out, I think uh, using uh, GUI tools is better for you. So now we have gparted installed. Just type in gparted. There it is. We have to put in your root password, obviously, because we are going to be working off drives. So we see here SDA. So make sure you watch which drive you're working with because you see here our one terabyte, the device is slash dev slash SDA. So this is the drive we want to format. So we choose SDA. See, there's some data on there, but I don't care. We're going to delete everything. So we're going to choose the partition that's on there. And we're going to delete the partition that's on there now. Then we're going to right click again. We're going to go new. Um, here's you can choose the fast system you want. So because I'm working with Linux, uh, I'm going to format the drive with ext4. Obviously, if you're going to work with Windows later, you can do NTFS or you can do XFAT. Um, you can format the drive somewhere else and bring it over XFAT. It's really up to you, but we're going to go with ext4. Since we're going to be working with everything on Linux, we're just going to keep it Linux uh, partition. Linux partition. So let's go apply. As going to format the, you can see there, disks now just deleted the uh, partitions. And so format's completed. You can see now that uh, the drive is formatted in the ext4. It's, uh, it's going to reload the partition scheme again. Uh, we can close that now. We can see here our one terabyte volume showed up here, so we can we can mount it if you like. So now the one terabyte is mounted. Make sure you don't click your evidence drive, which is right here. So now that the um, partition is mounted, uh, we can. Uh, we can type in df-h and we can see the um, the one terabyte is mounted uh, in slash media slash my username and then this weird uh, UDID which is the UDID of the drive so um, we now we know where to put our image so um, for the sake of the time of the video uh, I'm already running uh, the DCFLDD on my uh, source drive which is here it's already at 60 gigs um, the command for this is as you can see DCFLDD space if, which is the input input file which is slash dev slash sdb because we know our drive is sdb uh, we don't want to point to the partition we want the entire drive including the slack space at the end here uh, then space then of uh, which is our file which is where it's going to go so you're going to go f equals so let's let's see what this command will look like it's a dcfldd if equals slash dev slash sda and make sure you run this as root, by the way. So uh, before I forget, sudo space and dc of the slash off equals slash and uh, the one terabyte was mounted in. Let me just check here again in disks. It's mounted in um, slash media slash forensic guy slash that weird thing. So again, some me hit tab that completes the command for you. And then fo tab again completes the line for you and then 94 hit tab and now we're going to be in that directory where the drive is mounted we're going to name it uh, my image dot img hash equals you can do md5 comma sha256 but for the sake of the video we're going to do just md5 and then hash log equals it's a bit bigger equals and then the the hash log again you have to point it where you want it so you have to go slash media unfortunately if you that far in the command it's not going to complete it for you so so we're going to do it like this we're going to select all this control shift c or you can go in here copy and then control shift v 
and then uh, log is gonna be my hash txt when you hit enter it's gonna start imaging so like I said I'm already running it here you can see it's already at 63 gigs uh, we can also monitor the speed of this uh, this drive here by running a, a disk command right here so the what remember we installed iostat so iostat space dash p uh, space sdb which is the source drive we want to monitor space slash d uh, dash d space one so every second it's going to update the speed of the drive you can see it's going at 30 megs a second imaging it's not a fast drive it's going through usb3 uh, but not necessarily a fast drive uh, when it comes to imaging i probably should have taken an uh, ssd but that's okay so let's wait for it to finish and I'm going to show you how to uh, verify the hashes which you should be doing after each imaging and then we're going to load into autopsy and then uh, you can start your investigation. So let's pause the video here and I'm going to come back when it's all done. So as you can see the imaging is here it was done. We got uh, the entire drive. There was no errors. Uh, luckily I found the drive that didn't have any bad sectors. So when that is all done you got to verify your image. There's two ways of verifying the image. One way is to run DCFLDD input file which was sdb which is a source drive and then vf equals to and you point it to the uh, image you've created and then you type in verify log and you create another verify log another method is using md5 sum but uh, i've chose to use uh, dcfld because i use dcfld to create an image so i'm going to use dcfld to do verify the image so you're done with the image i want to stop this verifying process um so you've done your uh, imaging. So now, uh, so you have that image. It's sitting on your on your target drive. Now, obviously, mine is sitting on my desktop because I started this before the video. Uh, but you will be you, yours will be on your target drive. Anyways, thanks for watching. That's it for this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, really helps the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.